The big day is here. The dignitaries have accepted their invitations, the press has turned out in force, and the organisers have their fingers crossed. A new product is about to be launched onto the market, the result of an enterprise project that's taken six months to complete and involved nearly 1,500 high school pupils. It's called Sunday Munch, a new brand of crisps. Yes, that's right, crisps. Deep-fried, artificially flavoured crisps. This is Project Crunch, an enterprise project to suit the taste of pupils. The teenagers, and surely they should have the freedom to choose. And it's their decisions that have shaped and moulded this project, and we followed their decision. The Sunday Munch story starts here, a snack factory in Staffordshire. It's run by a sibling threesome who were all educated at Thomas Elaine's High School in New Toxeter. It's our 21st anniversary this year, so uh, all of myself, my sister and my brother, we went to the school and we were looking at some ways where we could actually start to put something back into into Utoxeter really, because we're not all that well known in Utoxeter. And we thought one of the ways we could do it was with an enterprise project with the school. The school's enterprise coordinator jumped at the idea of a partnership with a local manufacturer, even though it manufactured a product that doesn't meet healthy eating guidelines. The company has, however, built a reputation for producing crisps with much less fat and salt than average. The product itself, you know, the fact that we can't sell it in schools shouldn't actually deter us from what the product is all about. The innovation, the creativity has come from the students, the fact that they've been working in teams with mixed ability and students that they never ordinarily would maybe talk to in school. That, for me, is the positive features that have come out of Project Crunch. The project began with market research. Pupils were given the chance to choose a healthier option, pitta chips. However, none of them did. Don't like that one. Too boring, don't like that one. Nah. The school linked its business ambition with timetable innovation. All 1,500 pupils were split into groups of both mixed abilities and ages. An enterprise week was then declared, and the whole school was taken off timetable each morning to concentrate on Project Crunch. It seemed to me exactly the sort of thing we ought to be doing, and uh, we ought to use school flexibly and so the children could learn in different sorts of teams. Are you taking a little bit of a risk with uh, other subjects? Oh yes, we are. But in fact, if you look at actually how much time the math people or the English people have actually lost, it is actually very small. And of course, the students have been gaining other skills that they'll be able to apply back within that, um, those departments. Two further mornings were set aside for the project, whatever the weather. Now, what I want one group to do for me today is get some muck in there, cover it up, and get this plot prepared. The other group, on this plot, we won't need to put any muck in there because it's the inorganic plot. So you can start digging on here, guys. You know what you're doing? You get yourself set up with some spuds, girls. Thomas Elaine's is the only school left in the county with a working farm. And although it can't mass-produce potatoes, it can highlight the benefits of growing them organically. Is this hard work? Yeah. Very. Are you enjoying it? Yeah, I do. It's just a change from everything else. I think the unorganic will grow best, but I prefer the organic potatoes. Why? They've got a better taste in here, not full of chemicals. In food technology classes, a comparative study was made of the different methods of cooking thin slices of potato. This was the last demonstration of deep frying ever likely to be staged in the school. I think these would be done in what they call big brat pans. Interestingly, in taste tests, older pupils were more likely to favour the baked option, that's on tray A, over the fried on tray B. It was just really moist and sort of, it was easy to, nice to eat. And what about B? Too greasy and fatty. But younger palates overwhelmingly preferred potato slices deep fried. The flavour better? Yeah, it was sweeter and so I preferred B. Okay, what about you? I, th I preferred B because they're like more softer than all the rest and well they're just their general taste is nicer. Sweeter perhaps for most pupils but for some teachers the decision to deep fry left a bitter taste. 
when we started this, I thought it was going to be de to develop a healthy product. Um, but very quickly, it changed to be a business enterprise. And I do think that they've lost sight of the fact that we were initially looking at a healthier product. Right. Mm. But what's healthy doesn't always make money. No, that's true. <laughs> More research was needed now to find a flavour. The clear winner was the traditional taste of roast beef, Yorkshire pudding and gravy. So yep. roast beef's definite favourite. Yep. Do you eat a lot of roast beef in your Toxeter? Is it a favourite? Um, yeah, of course we do. It's so, a farming, yeah. farming community, really, isn't it? So, yeah, yeah of course we do. Once the product had been decided, work could start on the packaging. I personally like this one. What do people think of that? Well, it looks more modern and the green colours make it look more organic. Yeah, that's nice. And that works with the idea of root vegetables. But it's nice that the whole school and we have to go and liaise with other <coughs> departments and other areas. It's a nice opportunity for some independent learning. It also helps, I think, that you have the opportunity to work as a team for something that actually isn't as pressured. Well, it is pressured, but not as pressured as a GCSE and things like that. What's the most important part of the packaging? Probably the nutrition information and how much fat's in it. Do you think children really read that? No, but if the parents brought them for them, then they would read that. Oh, do you read it? Sometimes. I think you should be truthful. Have something like, eat these crisps, they'll make you fat. Oh, well, not really, because these are like healthier crisps than normal crisps, so... Won't they make you fat? Well, it depends how many you eat of them. <laughs> All pupils had the chance of coming up with their own designs. The gravy cow. That's a good idea. So fresh you can hear the moo. Wonderful. Oh wow, this is a good one. Roast beef Yorkshire pudding and gravy and we've got some cows in a swimming pool with the Yorkshire puddings on the head. I like that one. All in one. Sunday dinner. That's a nice idea. Sunday munch. Sunday munch. So instead of Sunday lunch, Sunday munch. It's a good one. <laughs> Four. The PE department was asked to find ways of burning off the crisp calories and come up with tips that could be carried on the packaging. On to the next activity now. Of course, you don't need a gym to keep slim. Go on, Lauren. What are you doing here? Um, we're moving the hoop up and down so that it's like easy, so it shows that it's exercise for old people, that they can do it at home. You feel a bit silly? Yeah, just a bit. <laughs> That looks really, really painful. It is, just a bit. So, if you eat crisps, you've got to go through this sort of pain? Yeah, uh, probably. As a sports teacher, how do you feel about getting involved in this sort of project, which is sort of being all about eating crisps, really? I know. I mean, as long as it's in moderation, I'm happy. Um, no more than one packet a day, really. Um, you don't see sort of Kelly Holmes eat, munching on a packet of crisps before she eats, don't, no. starts racing. The likes of Gary Lineker does though, doesn't he? So, <laughs> and he, he did the job. The drama department had the job of creating an advert for the school crisps. Unfortunately, Gary Lineker wasn't available to help out. Brad, big cheesy smile, all right? So they turned to another, slightly less known sporting celebrity. It was daunting taking on a new task, but exciting at the same time, especially as we've got a group of kids who don't normally do drama. To be given the sales and the drama and the presentation was quite exciting and something new. Is it difficult to get a positive message over something like crisps? It's not about necessarily the crisp, it's more about the learning curve and the enterprise and the project itself and being part of that that really is the aim of this. The partnership between school and factory also involved regular visits to the production line and the snack lab. Here, tests are being carried out to check levels of salt. We add salt uh, to the product to add flavour to the product and also it acts as a preservative as well to the product. OK, so why is salt important? Is it in the bloodstream? Does it, use it is, it's in the blood. Uh, you know, blood, if you've ever tasted it, does taste salty. And, um, and that's the way that the salt is, in fact, transported around the body. What do you think uh, pupils get out of coming over here to the factory and seeing the lab like this? 
I think it's always it's always good to sort of look at real world applications of science. It's seen very much in the classroom, often as a uh, you know as a sort of in a slight ivory tower. It's very disconnected to, to reality, and I think a lot of the skills and a lot of the sort of ideas in science, you know, really do have day to day applications. <laughs> The project has been overseen by an executive board made up of six formers, including one appointed managing director. The snack company is also represented, as discussions are held on the name of the product and the style of the packaging. We've got a list of names that have been suggested from the groups. Could you just not have a lanes bites or something like that? Because then it's, it's obvious to local people where it's come from in the fact that it is a school project. I think you want to avoid beefy bites and crazy cow because if you're selling it to vegetarians yeah. it's a bit... Yeah. Have they made any mistakes? Not mistakes as such, but there's been some overzealous ideas, I think, where we've had to say that in an ideal world, if we had endless amounts of money, that would be a fantastic idea or a um, packaging design. But we've had to sort of say, no, you need to keep it to a certain minimum print run the type of p packaging that's used. Um, but no, they've, they're, I've been impressed with a lot of their ideas, really. The name that's finally chosen is Sunday Munch, and the packaging brings together the school shield and a cam in gravy with a Yorkshire pudding on its head. On the back are the tips on what to do once you've eaten the contents, such as disco dancing for 50 minutes. Everything is now set for the first packets to come off the production line. It's been hard work getting here, but I think it's a lot better than we'd all hoped for, so we're really, really pleased with the end result. To see it like this as a commercial crisp and things like that is really, really good. 15,000 packets are being produced as part of the first run, and they'll be sold in local shops for local people. I think initially the, the focus is very going to be very much on the local area. Um, we've got four, over 1,400 pupils of parents and family and relatives that will be working, socialising in all sorts of venues around the county. And so I think there's going to be a great focus on village shops, um, local village pubs, tennis clubs, cricket clubs. Um, and we'll also try and aid with some introductions to some of the bigger multiple retailers like Sainsbury's and Tesco's. There's certainly no shortage of confidence as the crisps are launched, despite a promotional cow being off message. Cows for justice. Whee. Do you eat a lot of crisps? Uh, yes. <laughs> and I think I should perhaps be eating more now. <laughs> you don't think they're unhealthy? No, nothing's unhealthy, it's just moderation. As the launch comes to a close and the crisps head for the shelves, it becomes clear this may just be the start. We are going to go into discussions with Glennons about possibly extending the range, uh, but have a little bit of a breather and see how the success of Sunday Munch goes. So a whole range of Sunday Munches? Could... We could, yeah. The, the possibilities are endless, from turkey and stuffing to roast chicken. You could find all your Sunday dinners in a bag.